Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Uh, my friend Stephen Ranella of The Meat Eater uh, had a pretty good statement, I thought, and I asked for permission to play the statement on my podcast talking about the Bears Ears National Monument and the Grand Staircase uh, Escalante National Monument. As you know, uh, President Trump just reduced the size of those monuments and I thought, uh, Steve, uh, although we don't agree on all issues uh, or every issue, um, I thought he had a pretty good take uh, on the Bears Ear National Monument and Grand Staircase uh, National Monument reduction. Uh, so uh, enjoy it. Uh, if you want more uh, from Stephen, obviously you can go to MeatEater.com. You can listen to the Meat Eater podcast and, of course, uh, the Meat Eater t- television show, uh, which is on Netflix. And I appreciate his take, and I appreciate you, you, you guys' the support of this podcast. At Meat Eater, we've been getting flooded with comments and questions about the Trump administration's decision to drastically reduce the size of the Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante monuments. Now, I've been slow to weigh in on it only because my opinions on the subject lack the sort of pugnacious absolutism that most people are hungry for in situations like this. But I'm disappointed with the decision. The two monuments protected hundreds of thousands of acres of pristine wildlife habitat that was open to hunting and fishing. Now, many hunters have pointed out that hunting and fishing rights on these lands were tenuous, and there's some truth to that. We've had other monument designations that eventually resulted in hunters being locked out of lands that they had traditionally utilized. Now, I would have liked to have seen this problem addressed through absolute assurances that hunting would continue in perpetuity on the monument lands and that state-level wildlife managers would have autonomy to do their jobs as they see fit. And while this move certainly takes steps to address those concerns, I view it as an overcorrection. If you're running around saying that Trump stole my land, you're not being accurate with your words. The ownership of the land in question is not changing. Nothing that was private becomes public with the monument designation and nothing that was public becomes private with the undoing of the designation. What is changing are the management priorities of the land. For now, it's going back to what it was about a year ago when it was established as a monument by President Obama on December 28, 2016. That's a significant thing for sure, but let's stay true to the facts on this. There's a fear among conservationists that much of the now former monument will be converted into an industrial landscape. I think those fears are being exaggerated by certain parties, but we'll definitely see increased mineral extraction and oil and gas development in this region if the executive order doesn't wind up getting blocked by the courts. But does this mean Armageddon for the land surrounding Bears Ears? I doubt it. A more reasonable concern is what this might mean for other national monuments. If Trump can roll back the size of monuments created by Obama and Clinton, could a future president decide to undo Theodore Roosevelt's Devil's Tower National Monument in service of some powerful donor's request? I think that's an extreme scenario, but this does introduce a level of uncertainty around the future of many landscape-scale monuments. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Looking from a sky-high vantage point. It's helpful right now to imagine hunting and fishing as a resplendent estate with a beautiful mansion and an equally beautiful grounds. Now imagine that we have a housekeeper who takes really good care of the mansion, but sometimes dumps all the garbage outside on the landscaping. Also imagine that we have a groundskeeper who does a beautiful job with the landscaping, but tends to dump all the yard waste inside the mansion. That's a good way to think of the relationship that our two political parties have with hunting and fishing right now. Since the above is an imperfect analogy, I'll put it more bluntly and say that one of our political parties does a pretty good job of defending wildlife habitat that hunters and fishers rely on, but they often do a shitty job of defending the rights of hunters and anglers. Our other political party does a great job of defending the rights of hunters and anglers, but they often do a poor job of defending wildlife habitat. The problem is, There are no other job candidates out there. We can't punch the groundskeeper in the nose over the yard waste problem and punch the housekeeper in the nose over the garbage problem. Instead, we have to convince them both to work in harmony in the upkeep of the estate. 
In order to spread the criticism fairly, I'll point out that we have a similar problem with our conservation groups. Half of them work closely in support of the housekeeper to make sure the job is getting done right, and half of them work closely with the groundskeeper. I believe that all these groups do have betterment of the estate in mind, but their efforts create some mutual tension. While a lot of sportsmen have been deeply concerned about Bears ears over the last few days, which is understandable, I've also been reading about the new governor of New Jersey, who actually campaigned on the promise to end the state's bear hunting season, and then there's a politician in Arizona who's put together legislation to end bobcat and mountain lion hunting in his state. Last fall, Montanans had to go to the ballot to defeat a measure that would have banned trapping on public lands. Thankfully, they easily defeated it. To return to the idea of hunting and fishing as a resplendent estate, we're always defending the borders from something. It was the market hunters in 1900. After that, it was unfettered environmental destruction. Right now, we've got a new handful of problems coming from different directions. I have confidence that we'll come out on top, but it's going to take persistence, creativity, and continued diligence.